Welcome to the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of December 19th, 2016. I'm going to do something a little bit new on the podcast this week because it has absolutely nothing to do with Solid Signal and it's coming toward the end of the year. So um, I'm just going to take my chances that uh, somehow I'm not going to get incredibly busted for putting out this particular podcast, which Granted, I've gone way off topic before and haven't gotten busted, but you never know, there's always a first time. Well, it's going to come as no surprise to anyone who is out there that I'm a big Star Wars fan and that I was out there seeing the new Star Wars film over the weekend, and so I thought I'd do a quick review of it. Uh, By way of credentials, I have none. I have no published movie reviews. I did take a movie reviewing class in college um, about 30 years ago and since then have fancied myself as good as any other reviewer, just like most people. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, basically fleshes out the first three paragraphs of the opening crawl of the original Star Wars, which is a sort of a thin premise, I will admit, and yet it manages to turn it into almost two hours of movie entertainment. I don't really want to spoil this for you, but there's going to be some stuff that you're going to need to know Uh, I will try to avoid most of the major plot points, but let's be honest, you know exactly what happens. They do get the plans of the Death Star, and the Death Star gets destroyed in the next movie, so come on, there's only so much you can say. It's like Titanic, you know that the boat sinks at the end. That having been said, I think there was an amazing amount of tension in the end of this movie, and not all of it was completely uh, expected. Yes, you knew how things were going to end, but you didn't know the details, and it was surprising to see exactly what happened to the characters that were there. Needless to say, this being a Star Wars film, there was a huge uh, special effects budget, and it was spent, for the most part, excellently. This was a film that was extremely rewarding if you were just this detail-oriented fan of the original Star Wars, now called Episode Four: A New Hope. Not only were there familiar characters from Episode Four present, but... In fact, some unused footage from that film was used in one of the space battles to try to resurrect characters who had uh, actually, the characters died at the end of episode four, and more importantly, the actors are much, much older now. And that's kind of what I want to focus on. This movie took a big chance by introducing a completely digital version of Grand Moff Tarkin and Myself, I didn't think it completely paid off. I found myself distracted, and the character seemed a bit video gamey to me. But yet, on the other hand, the person I saw in the movie with said they had no idea this was a digital character, so perhaps I'm being a bit too picky. It says an awful lot that somebody who just didn't know had no idea this was a digital character. This was not Jar Jar Binks. This was an actual human interacting with other actual humans. I will say in that sense it was pretty impressive. There was just so much packed into this film, so much detail for Star Wars fans, and I don't want to spoil this too much, but there were two characters who appeared in the cantina in the original Star Wars that somehow also appeared in a city that later gets destroyed. So it's not quite, you know, that one kind of didn't work for me, but overall I thought the film had a good tone, I thought it told an interesting story, and it told it in an interesting and relevant way. It connected some dots that well, didn't necessarily need to be connected, but if you're a Star Wars fan and you wanted to be embraced or immersed in that sort of world, then you were satisfied. On the other hand, I will say that if you are not a massive Star Wars fan, if you haven't spent the last 40 years dissecting every single question in the Star Wars universe, you might be asking yourself why certain things did happen the way that they did, and the only way, the only reason that you can give is honestly, well, Such and such had to happen because they said that's what happened in the original Star Wars. That's pretty weak plotting, I will give you that. If you went in just looking for a standalone movie, not knowing too much about the universe, then you were probably disappointed and bored. If you were looking for a good special effects film, this was, I'm not going to say among the best. Um, There have been some really beautiful special effects films out there. Um, I think of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy being very well executed and just beautiful to look at, and some other films out there, um, for example, Jupiter Ascending, which wasn't a very good film, but just it was a very beautiful film, special effects-wise. This film was not necessarily that impressive from the special effects point of view, but on the other hand, 
its lack of impressiveness kind of tied in with the fact that it was supposed to look like Star Wars. It was supposed to look like the same Star Wars that, you know, was shot 40 years ago and then tinkered with ever since. So it's not going to be able to look incredibly, incredibly impressive because it has to have that kind of grounding. I would say if you're one of the few people who haven't yet seen Rogue One, a Star Wars story, if you're a big Star Wars fan, I would see it in the theater. If you are not a big Star Wars fan, I would wait for pay-per-view, Redbox, however you get your particular uh, movie-watching stuff. Because, as I said, the effects will not incredibly blow your mind, and the digitalizations may actually work better on a smaller screen. I don't know exactly whether I'd, how I'd rate this in a scale of 1 to 10. I would say I gave it a total geek out, so I enjoyed it. But your mileage may vary depending on exactly how much you care about the original movie. It's still going to go on to become one of the bigger movies of the year, possibly the biggest movie of the year, which it possibly deserves, and maybe the biggest budget movie of the year. I'm not sure either. Um, and it does deserve a little bit of your money. I'm just not sure if it deserves 15 bucks per person, uh, unless you're an incredible Star Wars fan. That's it for the podcast for this week. If you like the review, let me know, and that might help me when I get called into my boss's office, as I probably will. See you next week.